Politicians have been talking about lights at the end of the tunnel this week after three different teams of researchers each said they have a vaccine prototype that's over 90% effective. It's been busy. First off there is the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer in Germany. Then within days researchers in Russia said they had similar results. And now there's the US Moderna team as well. And a fourth team at Oxford are just behind them. All this has raised hopes of multiple treatments for coronavirus being made available soon. But vaccines have been having a bad time in recent years, as reams of misinformation have been spreading online. And there are many people asking really valid questions about safety, especially given the huge rush there's been to get the first effective coronavirus vaccine out. So let's lay out the facts and look at why we actually need a vaccine in the first place, who's trying to make it, and crucially whether enough people will actually take a vaccine for them to be most effective. So why is it so important that we actually have vaccines? This might seem obvious, but let's remember that the coronavirus has infected over 50 million people around the world and killed well over a million. A vaccine isn't a cure, but scientists and doctors tell us that a vaccine is what we need to actually slowly turn the tide. A vaccine works by tricking the body into thinking it's been infected so that the body produces the crucial antibodies it needs to protect against the real thing. And if enough people are vaccinated, eventually the illness dies out because there aren't enough unprotected people for the virus to spread. But with an illness as widespread as COVID-19, that means huge numbers of vaccinations and huge logistical challenges. Industry and governments have been planning for it for months. And even if small supplies are made available soon, then vaccinating the most vulnerable people could save lives. Okay, so now let's look at who's actually doing the work. There are 48 potential vaccines going through clinical trials around the world. But there's probably only a few that you've actually heard about. There are the two candidates from Moderna and Pfizer which have moved forward in the past week, which both use genetic material called messenger RNA. And then there's the more conventional viral vector vaccine being developed in Russia. Normally all vaccines go through three phases of clinical trials before they're actually sold. And all three of the vaccines in the news are in the final human phase. This is where one group of people is given the vaccine and another group is given a placebo. A good trial will be double blind, which means that neither the patient or the researcher knows who's been given the vaccine and who's been given the placebo. The hope is that the people who are given the vaccine will be less likely to develop the virus than the people given the placebo. And that's what the early results from Pfizer's trial shows. Of the 94 people who tested positive for coronavirus, almost all were in the placebo group. So the researchers claimed more than 90% efficacy, which is basically effectiveness in the lab. Moderna's results were a little higher, at 94.5% efficacy. And the Russian group claimed a similar efficacy for theirs, just based on a much smaller group of 20 people. These are all early results and it's possible that they'll change, but experts say they're good early signs. And though the three we know about sound similar, the Russian team have released their data just a bit earlier on. You may have heard of a fourth vaccine being developed in Oxford with AstraZeneca. They're at a similar stage as the Russian team, and interim results show that their vaccine is around 70 to 90% effective. We don't know when the Russian or Oxford vaccines will complete their phase three trials, but given the speed everything else has been moving, it probably won't be long. Whereas Pfizer and Moderna are in the final stages of gathering safety data. Okay, but some people have asked whether this safety process has been rushed. It's true that vaccines could be rolled out to tens of millions of people, just based on data from only a few hundred confirmed cases. And some people have asked whether there'll be enough data at the end to really tell us whether the vaccines help seriously ill patients, or elderly people, or people with underlying health conditions. But drug companies say they followed all the normal rules, just streamlined them in places. For example, normally they wait for all their tests to be done before they share their data with the regulator. But this time they've been giving the data over as it comes in. This is really just a speeding up of the process, but the actual safety checks stay the same. There was one fundamental difference in Russia, when in August the government approved the vaccine for use, even before it had gone through all the safety checks. This led to outrage from scientists around the world, and nine drug companies came out and assured that they wouldn't be following suit. Still, some people doubt these safety claims, so the crucial question is, will enough people take the vaccine? This is complex stuff, and anti-vaccine misinformation has been a constant presence on social media for years. The coronavirus pandemic has just collided with something that was already there. One leading anti-vax theory is that the new Pfizer vaccine can actually alter the human genome. It's been roundly rejected by scientists, but that hasn't stopped it gaining traction. One worrying finding from a survey of more than 1,200 people was that respondents from ethnic minorities said they were more than three times more likely to not take a COVID vaccine than respondents who said they were white. And that comes as more evidence emerges that people from ethnic minorities are more at risk from COVID. But overall, the same survey found that over 90% of people said that they would take the vaccine or give it to their kids. In reality, the idea of introducing new genetic material to our body might seem strange, but it is something that happens all the time, from viruses or other pathogens, even from the food we eat. It's just that normally, we don't have to think about it quite so much. <laughs>